Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com, and today we're going to deep patch some stainless steel. When it comes to metal, there's a lot of different ways of branding it, and in this case here, the customer has a specific application uh, for their stainless steel. So they cut these things out uh, for us and send it to us. And what you see here is actually deep patch. So this is what it looks like right off the fiber laser. I'll compare them one to the other. So you can see it looks a little bit rough. And that's because we're deep patching him. After I just clean it up a little bit, you can see it here. So the goal with this here is the customer actually got this done in stainless steel. And what they're gonna do afterwards is paint it. And the goal is when they put the paint on this, you still see what we etched. Now there's two advantages to that. One, you're protecting the surface of it during the application and making something sort of more visually interesting. So it's a color instead of just the regular stainless steel look. But the other advantage is even when the paint comes off, which will happen, um, you still see the markings on there, which is very important. So that's where for the customer, it makes sense to go deep etching into these. Now it's hard to actually show you how deep this is. You can sort of see it there. It's roughly 0 0.02 inches. So it's got, a, it's got a good depth to it, but it just doesn't come out very well on the camera. And the nice thing is we're doing one at a time essentially using our gavel fiber laser. The reason we're using the gavel is pretty straightforward. Uh, doing this would take absolutely forever with uh, this one here, behind me here, which is a gantry fiber uh, laser cutter and engraver. And the gavel is just a lot faster, but the disadvantage to a gavel is you have a very small surface area you can actually work from efficiently, and it just happens this fit just perfectly within those parameters. Now, of course, this is not real time. This is done over the course of an entire hour and a bit more on top of that. And what you'll notice is it's actually carving into the stainless steel surface. And there's proof of that because if you look at around the end of each one of these little segments of me etching this stuff, you'll notice that there's some little bit of dirt that builds up on the surface of it. And that dirt is actually stainless steel, little bits and chunks and pieces uh, that get vaporized and get sort of extracted from the surface of the stainless steel. Now, if you look at the top of the video, you of course see a lot more of that. Um, there are quite a few plaques down here and we do a lot of plaques, usually a variety of different uh, methods and processes. And you end up with this very fine powder. It's the same sort of thing you get when you uh, plasma cut in a shop. You get the very fine metal powder everywhere. And this is no different. It's just that it happens to be stainless steel. Now we can do the same process here with mild steel, aluminum, titanium, any sort of metal. It's a little bit tougher on hardened metals. Uh, we do some uh, projects for aerospace where the metal they use is hardened and it takes a lot more power. I could definitely see the difference, let's say between a very hard metal and a soft metal when it comes to doing this process here. Now it looks a little bit blurry as well. And the reason for that is because of all the debris that builds up around the etching area. Uh, once that's cleaned off, it looks actually pretty, pretty nice. And the difference between this process and annealing is annealing is done one or two passes, and it's just on the very, very top surface, while the etching is actually done into the surface. So we're actually digging in, which is why it takes so much longer to do versus the annealing process. So what are some of the limitations when it comes to doing deep etching on this? Um, of course, if we were doing this at aluminum, it would be a lot more easy because it's a softer metal than stainless steel, of course. Uh, but the other thing to keep in mind is when we're introducing all this power, this energy onto the stainless steel specifically, uh, we also get the same thing with polycarbonate. Um, it gets really, really hot. And it, because it gets really, really hot, what happens is it tends to want to warp. So the top surface is warmer than the bottom surface. Does it, eat, you know, it doesn't really matter the thickness. I believe this is around 12 gauge, so a little bit less than 1 8 inch. But if I keep pounding it more and more and more, what happens is it starts to warp. And that's not too much of an issue, uh, but what happens is when it starts to warp, it warps uniformly, and then basically it wants to start spinning. It's kind of a weird thing that happens. And I've had that happen before in the shop with uh, jobs that you know I'm testing things out. Now, one of the ways to avoid that, one is to have a good system set up, the other one is here. We're not actually etching too much of the surface. So there's still a lot of stainless steel that we're not warming up. So the heat has a chance to dissipate throughout 
and it's pretty much okay for these projects here. As to what we can actually etch, it can literally be anything. As long as you have a black and white image, a uh, vector image, and text, we're okay. Uh, if you have something that's sort of color or that kind of stuff, it doesn't really work uh, with deep etching at all. So and it does have limitations, you know, positive, negative with everything. So looking for deep etching stainless steel, of course we cut that as well for you in the shop if you needed us to. Uh, contact me at cncrr.com. We'll make it for you and ship it right to your door.